fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. I guess everyone knows what Wheaties, Tricks, Sugar Jets, Cheerios, and Kicks cereal boxes look like. But right now, your grocer has some that are real different. Just turn them around, and presto, you're looking at a magic Disneyland park light up. Light them up with Christmas tree lights, and they look so real you can imagine you're seeing Disneyland Park at night. There's Sleeping Beauty's Castle, and a special lion light up that looks almost as real as the lions in Walt Disney's new True Life Adventure Technicolor picture, The African Lion. Altogether, there are 18 different light-ups, and here's how you get them. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Wheaties, Cheerios, Kicks, Tricks, and Sugar Jets. The Mickey Mouse sign tells you that there's a Disneyland Park light-up on the back of each package, free of extra cost. Start collecting Disneyland Park light-ups right now. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Tricks, Sugar Jets, Kicks, Cheerios, and Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! Pop Jenkins, former top sergeant, United States Cavalry, retired. Sat at the breakfast table with his wife, Lindy, in their small farmhouse. Hmm, mighty good flapjacks, Lindy. Mighty good. Yep, one thing that makes me content to be retired from the Army is a good cooking, I guess. <laughs> Even when you cook beans, they taste different. <laughs> I know how much you miss being with the cavalry. Don't think I haven't noticed how clean and shiny you've kept that bugle of yours since you retired three years ago. Don't like to see things dirty or dull, Lindy. Yep, reckon I have the shiniest bugle, the shiniest riding gear, and the glossiest horse in the regiment. Maybe that's why you got the contract to farm out the retired cavalry horses, Rufus. They knew you'd keep those horses right up to snuff. Well... Now, I figure horses like people. The better they look, the better they feel. A man can't strut and a horse can't prance if he knows he looks shoddy and run down at the heels. <laughs> Say, rider's coming. Look through the window, Rufus. Two troopers are bringing more retired horses. Jumping, gee, horse of that, the cavalry must be going out of business. <laughs> but the more they send me, the more cash I get for keeping them. Pop, got a new batch for you. By golly, look there. Prince, the captain's mount, and Brownie and Queenie. <laughs> <laughs> you sure have a way with them, Pop. And you treat them right, too. I noticed the horses out in the pasture. They may be broken down, but they sure look well-groomed. Broken down, you say? <laughs> Just because a man or horse is retired don't mean he's broken down, son. No, sir. It just means he's got a chance to take it easy and get a new slant on life. Well, maybe. No, maybe about it. Uh, ever ride in a parade? Well, yeah. Once or twice. What did you see? <laughs> the trooper riding in front of me is about all. Yeah. Ever watch a parade? Sure. What did you see? Everything all that went by. Yeah. Just like life, son. 
When you're part of it, moving with the crowd, you don't see or learn too much about it. But when you sit back and watch it going by, well, you see and learn plenty. Gives you a chance to look things over and know what it's all about. Well, I'll get my horse now, then help you run these newcomers to the richest field of clover they ever saw in their lives. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Pop Jenkins' farm was half a mile from the only bridge across Rocky Gorge, a deep gash in the earth which paralleled the border for several miles. Once across the bridge, it was a two-hour ride to Fort Leeton and the Mexican border. Across the border in Mexico, Carlos Cortez, a renegade from the Mexican army, had taken to the hills with a band of army deserters. In time, he was joined by outlaws from the states who were avoiding the law. Carlos was talking to an outlaw leader, Russ Carson. Senor Russ, if everything goes well, we shall soon have plenty of gold. My spies are everywhere in this country. They have learned that a gold shipment from your country that is to be delivered across the border tomorrow. Uh, getting that gold shipment's too big a job for us, Carlos. The army will be handling that. <laughs> you underestimate me, amigo. One of my spies, who is with the general's headquarters in Chihuahua, sent me full information. How do you plan to grab the gold, Carlos? The plans made by the two governments are these. An emissary from the Mexican embassy in Washington is due to arrive at Fort Leeton, just across the border in Texas, on the noon stage tomorrow. The gold will be ready and waiting. He will bring the release papers. Go on. The wagon carrying the gold will be escorted across the international bridge immediately. An escort of Mexican soldiers will take over on this side of the border. All right, so much for that. Now for your plan. Tonight, you and your men will cross the Rio Grande into the United States. I shall go with you. In the morning, your gang will intercept the stage on the trail east of the Rocky Gorge Bridge. Your men will take over the stage, and I shall take the emissary's credentials and papers and ride in his place. Uh-huh. That sounds good so far. See, si. at Fort Leeton, they will release the gold to me, and I will proceed with the United States escort across into Mexico. The Mexican soldiers who will be sent to take over will be ambushed by my men, amigo. <laughs> by thunder, Carlos, you sure planned everything mighty well. <laughs> yeah, but of course, it will be simple, Senor Ross. I have your men ready to leave for the United States tonight. <laughs> The following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode across Rocky Gorge Bridge, a narrow wooden structure, and a short time later, moved along the trail where it bordered the Jenkins farm. A large farm wagon loaded with hay and drawn by four horses was turning onto the trail from a nearby field. Pop Jenkins, who was handling the reins, saw them and called out. Hey! Hey there! Tonto, there's Sergeant Jenkins. Hold over, hold. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, oh. Sergeant, <laughs> you look well. Those horses are in fine condition. Oh, I keep working. Not too much, but enough so they'll know they're still useful. Have to run this load of hay to the barn. Just coming from over Leeton Way? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. How's things at the fort and along the border? All right. Well, whenever you get time, stop by again. Thanks. We'll be seeing you soon. Adios, Sergeant. Goodbye. Adios. Goodbye, Tonto. Get up there. Come on. Got to keep this hay to the barn. He's a fine man, Tonto. Yeah. Just the one to have those retired horses in his care. Yeah. Come on, little Get him up, Scout. Later, the stage carrying the Mexican emissary to the border left the town of Fairfield, several miles from Pop Jenkins' farm. The trail was winding and rutted, so progress was necessarily slow. Get along there. Come on. A short distance from town, as the stagecoach reached a hollow between two hills, the outlaw gang suddenly rode from hiding. Outlaws, use your gun, guard. All right, but we don't have a chance. The guard, seriously wounded, fell from the stage. The driver immediately pulled to a stop. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. 
What is the meaning of this? I am Senor Fernando from the Mexican Embassy in Washington. I'm under the protection of the United States government. Get up. Welcome, Senor. Cortez, the renegade. You will be hanged for this. I think not. I shall change clothes with you, Senor, and take your papers. From here on, I shall be the emissary. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. You know, one of the best things about summer is those lazy afternoon picnics. And I bet your moms know about one of the easiest snacks ever, a marvelous Betty Crocker marble cake. Mmm, -hmm. what could taste better with a cold glass of milk or lemonade from the thermos than a big slice of marble cake? And Betty Crocker Marble Cake Mix is the mix in just one package that you can mix in just one bowl. There's no chocolate to melt, no extra bowls or pans to wash. And the same high-quality ingredients you choose yourself are right in the mix, including famous softest silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a cake that is high, light, and, well, absolutely perfect. Betty Crocker guarantees with all her cake mixes a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. Ask your moms to bake up a marvelous Betty Crocker marble cake for the next picnic your family plans. Now to continue... Some distance from where the holdup took place, the Lone Ranger and Toto turned from the trail to water their horses at a nearby stream. Easy, easy, oh, oh. They were out of sight of the trail when the stage, closely followed by the small group of riders, went by. Later, the masked man and Indian returned to the trail. When they reached the hollow, Toto pointed to the ground. Look, Kino Sabi. Mark show stage stop here. Hook marks of other horses come from side. Hold it, hold it. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh. Yes, but if it had been a holdup, the stage would have returned to town. We heard it pass on the trail not long ago, still heading for the border. Help! Help! Somebody, he said to me, fella. Someone back in the brush, Toto, come on. Uh -huh. The emissary, who had been tied and gagged with the driver and guard, managed to loosen his gag and had cried out for help. He looked in dismay as the masked man and Indian approached. More outlaws. We're not outlaws, senor. We came to help you. Here, I'll untie you. There are two others. He untied them. Quickly, the masked man and Indian freed the three men, and the emissary told what had happened, then added, That Carlos Cortez is most clever and ruthless. He must not get that gold shipment, senor. I've heard of Cortez. If you really want to help, you must find a way to stop them. But you and these men... I shall attend to the wounded guard while you and the Indian go for help. We're several miles from here to the Rocky Gorge Bridge, over a rutted and winding trail. Tonto, ride into town. It's not far. Identify yourself and tell the sheriff what happened. Have him send a buckboard for these men, then follow the stage with a posse. Uh, and what you do? I'll take shortcuts and try to reach the Rocky Gorge Bridge before the stage and the outlaws do. I'll find some way to keep them from crossing so that the posse can catch up to them. Now, hurry. Uh -huh. While Toto headed for the nearby town of Fairfield, the Lone Ranger, taking every possible shortcut, rode hurriedly in the direction of Rocky Gorge and the border. Later, he was riding past the Jenkins farm when a plan flashed into his mind. He turned from the trail and rode quickly toward the farmhouse. Oh, in there! Hop Jenkins came from the house as the Lone Ranger pulled to a stop. Oh, oh easy, steady, big boss. Howdy, mister. You seem to be in a hurry. Something wrong? Ready, Sergeant. Quickly and briefly, the Lone Ranger explained the situation, then said, If we can find a way to stop them from crossing the bridge, the posse will have a chance to catch up to them. I'll do anything you say, mister. But just the two of us can't do Did much. you unload that hay wagon? No, it's standing in front of the barn. And the horses are still harnessed to the wagon, feeding from their nose bags. Half a mile to the bridge. We could block the bridge with that wagon. But I doubt if those horses can go fast enough to get there in time. Wait. Hold on, mister. Just because they're retired don't mean they're finished. You wait here a minute. All right. Pop went hurriedly into the farmhouse. A few moments later, he came out carrying his shiny bugle. Well, what's that for? <laughs> Come along and see, mister. Meet you at the barn. Sure. Come on, Silver. 
Hold on, hold on. The Lone Ranger watched Pop climb to the wagon seat and take the reins. We're ready to roll, mister. Get up there. Hold on. They'll never make it in time. Wait a minute, just watch. The old sergeant placed the bugle to his lips, then loudly and clearly sounded the notes of the cavalry charge. Tired cavalry horses, driven by the expert hands of the old ex-sergeant, broke into a fast gallop, and with ears flattened and nostrils extended, pulled the hay wagon at top speed toward the bridge at the gorge. Come on, man! Come on, man! The Lone Ranger, amazed and pleased by the horse's reaction to the bugle, rode ahead of the wagon until the bridge was sighted. There's the bridge, just ahead, sergeant. Easy, sir, easy. Pop slowed the horses. Stop the wagon on the bridge, sergeant. Yes, I looked for the tracks of the stage, but saw not easy, steady big fella. We then hitch the horses from the wagon and lead them off the opposite side of the bridge. Let's hurry. Soon the horses, including Silver, were led from the bridge on the opposite side of the gorge and ground hitched among the trees. Then the Lone Ranger returned to the wagon, which made the narrow wooden structure impassable. Look to the east, mister. A cloud of dust on the trail. The stage and the outlaws are coming. They'll not cross, Sergeant. That is, if you're willing to sacrifice your hay wagon and its contents. The heck with the hay in the wagon. Do something quick. I knew you'd say that. I'll set fire to the hay right now. Man alive, look at that blaze up. Before that's finished, the wooden bridge will burn through, too. It's worth losing the bridge to save a fortune in gold, Sergeant. There's no other way to get to Fort Leeton. Come on, we'll hide behind boulders on this side and see what happens. A short time later, the stage and the mounted outlaws pulled to a stop near the flaming wagon. Look, it is a big wagon. Yeah, and it's blazing too much for us to get near it. It'll burn the bridge through. Yeah, perhaps not. The timbers of that bridge are very heavy. And when the flames from the wagon die down, we can make it across on horseback. We brought your horse along. He's over there with the others. Good. Let us get to the horses. The saddle horses had been ground hitched a short distance away because of the intense heat. As the outlaws started toward them, shots rang out from across the gorge. Hey, what, 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 Those shots for a warning. Hey, where you are, we'll kill you. Look out, men. Take cover. Somebody found out about it. Those shots came from behind the boulders across the gorge. First, we must get to the horses. Hey, they're purposely shooting near the horses to stampede them. Look, the horses are leaving. Oh! Come back here! Oh, it's no use. Hey, look. I see a hat over the top of a boulder yonder. Oh, my arm! Caramba, senors! Look behind us. Many horsemen coming. A big party will be trapped. You get done! As the large posse approached, the lawmen spread out, firing as they came. At the same time, the Lone Ranger and Pop continued to fire from across the gorge. The outlaws fought back for a few minutes. Then those who were not wounded, realizing they were trapped, quickly dropped their guns and raised their hands. Oh, 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 Sheriff, it is good you have come. I am a Mexican emissary. I have the papers to show you. Uh -huh. I'll take these. These men are outlaws, Senor Sheriff. They disposed of the driver and guard. They took me prisoner. What? That hombre is the leader. Hey, hey, what's the idea, Carlos? I am Senor Fernando. The sheriff has my credentials. Your Carlos Court has a double class and pole cat. Yeah? What's he doing here with these papers? Well, listen, and I'll tell you. Russ angrily gave the details of the plot to get the gold shipment. When he finished, the sheriff said, uh -huh. Well, thanks for filling in the details. The real emissary rode here with us, so we knew about Cortez. Uh, you had not come so soon, we could have crossed the gorge. The wagon burned up, but the bridge is just smoldering. Hey, there comes a masked man, Tano. Uh, let me see him. And Pop Jenkins is with him. 
The Lone Ranger on silver and Pop Jenkins riding bareback on one of the wagon horses rode across the smoldering bridge and pulled to a stop near the posse. Oh, oh. Oh. Here, Missy. I reckon we got you to thank for delaying these pole cats long enough for us to get here. Without the help of Sergeant Jenkins and his horses, it couldn't have been accomplished. The Lone Ranger briefly told what had happened. The sheriff chuckled as he said, <laughs> Yeah, looks like they retired Pop and those horses a bite too soon. But I uh, reckon the army will see that he gets a new wagon and cash for the burned hay. Oh, oh that <laughs> don't matter, Sheriff. Was worth losing more than that for the fun I had out of it, along with those horses. You see, the <laughs> emissary, Senor Fernando, rode here with us, Missy. He's waiting to get his papers. And then he wants to go on to Fort Neaton. Well, Sheriff, if you wish, Toto and I'll escort the emissary to the fort. You're yeah, fine. I know he'll be safe with you along. But uh, how quickly can you get to Fort Lee? In half the stage time, Sheriff, or less. Uh, that'll give you time to notify the Mexican authorities so they'll round up Cortez men before they get a chance to ambush some Mexican soldiers like they planned. Well, they're going to wait and ambush quarter of a mile back from the border at Mesa Pass, and I hope you catch every last one of them. Don't worry. They'll be captured. We leave at once, Sheriff. Adios, Sergeant. Goodbye, Goodbye, Sheriff. everybody. Goodbye. Come on, Toto. Oh, we'll see here. Yes. Give the emissary these papers. He already knows all about you. Right. Come on. Come, 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 come. Here are your papers, senor. We're riding with you. I am delighted, senor. Let us go now. Andale. Come, come. I do not understand, senor sheriff. In Mexico, a masked hombre is considered to be an outlaw. That's one masked hombre who isn't an outlaw, Cortez. But he sure knows how to deal with outlaws like you and this gang. Uh, yep, he sure does. That hay wagon stunt was his idea. And believe me, I never had more fun in my life. Proving that there was still plenty of life and vigor in me. And those old cavalry horses. <laughs> yes, sir. Was living all over again to be able to ride with the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.